Okay, first grade should be Friday, June 5th. This is our last official day for instruction. Um, I wanted to share that today I get to read Jack Prelutsky, one of my favorite poet, poets, um, and my favorite part of teaching the unit on poetry. So um, before we start, let's pray. I think I forgot to pray yesterday, and I'm so sorry if I did, but we will pray today. Our Heavenly Father, we do come humbly before you, Lord. Uh, we stand in awe of your wonderful creation, the deep seas, the vast land forms, all the amazing things that you have created. So, Lord, today we, um, we praise you for your creativity, your wisdom, your strength, your power, and your authority. And Lord, as we think about these things, we also um, come to you asking forgiveness for ways that we have not stood for your glory and honor. <clears throat> and Lord, we ask you to help us to think wisely, to use kind words, and to love others well. And Lord, we do pray, asking that you take care of those who are in need people who are hungry, people who are sick, people who are sad. And we rejoice with those who are having wonderful experiences with um, the birth of babies and, the, and marriages and uh, birthdays and all those special events that we celebrate. So Lord, we rejoice with those who are rejoicing and mourn with those who mourn. And Lord, today we also pray that you will inspire our hearts in special ways to reach out to others and to show kindness and gentleness and mercy and patience and goodness and kindness and self-control. We thank you that you have sent the Holy Spirit to walk beside us and that we can turn to you at any time in any place and ask for you for your help. And Lord, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. All right, so now I get to read some Jack Prelutsky, as I said, one of my favorites. Again, we're going to look for verses, the line of a poem, a stanza, which is a group of lines, line breaks, and Jack Prelutsky is pretty clever about how he uses line breaks. Rhyme, he definitely has a lot of rhyme in his poems, as well as rhythm, and then the meter of the beat, as opposed to the, to the uh, absence of the beat. All right, here is a book of poems by Jack Prelutsky called A Pizza the Size of the Sun. So right away you can see that what he's writing is poems that are kind of silly and funny. So I wanted to share a couple of you of these poems so you can see how he uses the style of poetry as well as ways that you can sort of play with the way you format the text, the words that you write, to help make the poem a little bit more interesting. So I want you to look at this one. We've all learned about using capital letters and lowercase letters, and you'll notice in this poem, he's got a lot of capital letters in the wrong place. So, and the name of the poem is I'm All Mixed Up. So he's using text to show how he's mixed up. So let me read this to you. I'm all mixed up. I'm all mixed up. I don't know what to do. I do not think I'm me today. I wonder if I'm you. My voice is not my voice today. It sounds entirely wrong. And many thoughts inside my head, I'm certain, don't belong. So you see, here's a verse. Here's a stanza. You see the line breaks. Um, so, and he's used the way he put the letters on the page to show how mixed up he is. My eyes are not my eyes today. My nose is not my nose. My shoes are unfamiliar. I don't recognize my clothes. My ears are not my ears today. My hair is not my hair. I even think I'm wearing someone else's underwear. No matter what I write today, it comes out looking strange. I hope that I can figure out a way to make it change. I'm looking closely at this poem, but still don't have a clue. I'm all mixed up. I'm all mixed up. 
I don't know what to do. So in this poem, he's used a lot of these features of poems as well. You have to use your senses to imagine him, uh, what he looks like, what he's doing. Um, so you're view, mostly you're seeing, but you're also hearing things. You have to infer that there must be something really odd going on and he's not writing his sentences correctly. We have to infer that maybe he's confused, he got up and hasn't had enough sleep, he might be hungry and needs to get something to eat because he's all mixed up. Visualize. Can you visualize what he looks like when he's looking in the mirror and he says, these aren't my ears, this isn't my nose? and then make connections to yourself. Do you ever feel all mixed up? I actually, to be honest with you, I had an experience like that earlier this week when I thought, wait a minute, what am I, and I forgot things and I was working on something and I realized I really wasn't thinking straight about it. So I could identify or connect with this poem really easily. So I'm gonna show you another one. And if you want, next week at our Friday Fun Day, I might be able to share a couple of these with you. So this one, look at the way he wrote the text here. It looks like a triangle. And it says, a triangular tail. So he used the text to make the shape, to make the poem a little bit more meaningful. Let me read what he wrote. I do not know at all how I got stuck inside this piece of pie. I'm unsure how to begin to get out of the fix I am in. See the line breaks? Broken so that he can make the shape. This triangle is simply not an entertaining sort of spot, so I can say what's happening without I'd like to leave and laugh. So he cleverly used the, the, the words to make the shape of the triangle, which is, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read this one, but I want to show you something. Look carefully at the text. It says, I am your mirror image. So look at the words. Actually written absolutely backwards. If you take this page and hold it up to a mirror and look in the mirror, it looks like it's the right way. And that was probably pretty challenging to put that that way, but it works. There's one particular poem I'm really looking for, and I could probably use the table context. Here it is. Look at this, what he did with the text. He made a circle out of it. So in order to read it, I'm going to have to turn the book, okay? And how do I know where to start? See if you can figure it out. If you didn't already, there's the word I is black. It's bold print. So that's the starting place. So I'm going to read it. I was walking in a circle when I spied a piece of paper covered with a pretty picture colored yellow, green, and red. As I picked it up, I noticed that it also had some writing, and I knew that I should read it. This is what the writing said. I was walking in a circle when I spied a piece of paper covered with a pretty picture colored yellow, green, and red. As I picked it up, I noticed that it also had some writing, and I knew that I should read it. This is what the writing said. I was walking in a circle when I spied a piece of paper covered with a pretty picture colored yellow, green, and red. As I picked it up, I noticed that it also had some writing, and I knew that I should read it. This is what the writing said. Did anybody pick up what's happening? What's happening is because of the way he wrote this in a circle, a circle doesn't have an ending. So you have to keep reading it and reading it and reading it and reading it, the same words over and over again, because that's how a circle works. It does not have a beginning and an end. And the only way we know what the beginning is was because he put it in bold print. So that was using the, the format of the text to carry the weight of the, of the poem. And I'm gonna read 
one more, although there's a lot of really fun poems that he wrote. This is called I'm Drifting Through Negative Space. And if you know anything about negative, it's the opposite of positive. So whatever would have been whatever would have been red is black. Oh, my favorite poem in here. Here it is. I love it because it stays in my head, too. So you'll notice there are stanzas. There's illustrations here, too, to kind of highlight this, the poem. The poem is called Rats for Lunch. And oops, and I don't know how you feel about rats. I don't mind them. I, you know, I'm not fond of them. I much prefer hamsters or guinea pigs, but they're okay. So it's called Rats for Lunch. Are you ready? I hope you're not eating lunch right now. Rat for lunch, rat for lunch, yum, delicious, munch, munch, munch. One by one or by the bunch. Rat, oh rat, oh rat for lunch. And it's written in bold print. So you might want to say it's stronger than the, than th this is what we call the verse. <clears throat> and it's repeated throughout the poem. The rest of the lines are not. Scrambled slug in salty slime is our choice at breakfast time. But for lunch, we say to you, nothing but a rat will do. And again, are you hearing the rhyme and the rhythm? Rat for lunch, rat for lunch, yum, delicious, munch, munch, munch. One by one or by the bunch, rat, oh rat, oh rat for lunch. For our snack each afternoon, we chew bits of baked baboon curried squirrel, buttered bat, but for lunch, it must be rat. Rat for lunch, rat for lunch, yum, delicious, munch, 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 one by one or by the bunch, rat, oh rat, oh rat for lunch. In the evening, we may dine on filet of porcupine, buzzard, gizzard, lizard chops, but for lunch, a rat is tops. Rat for lunch, rat for lunch. Yum, delicious, munch, munch, munch. One by one or by the bunch. Rat, oh rat, oh rat for lunch. Rat, we love you steamed or stewed, blackened, broiled, or barbecued, pickled, poached, or fried in fat. There is nothing like a rat. So you've been hearing. Do you think you can help me with the last stanza right here? It's the same thing I've been saying over and over again. So if you remember it, you can join me. Rat for lunch, rat for lunch. Yum, delicious, munch, munch, munch. One by one or by the bunch. Rat, oh rat, oh rat for lunch. All right, so that's enough Jack Prelutsky. As I said on our Friday fun day, the last day, which would be the 12th, perhaps we can uh, read a couple more of these if you'd like. All right, my friends. Um, this is our last reading lesson for the year. Um, you've done a lot of learning and a lot of growing, a lot of work, and we really appreciate all the efforts you've put into all the things that you've done. Um, so we'll see you again next week. All right. Bye.